In this video, we're going to again solve sensitivity problems over nonlinear equations, but in order to obtain the derivative information that is part of forward and the joint sensitivities, we're going to use the JAX deep learning framework, such that we no longer have to write down handwritten derivatives. Let's get started. Hi and welcome to this new video. I hope you watched the last video where we propagated derivative information over the solution to a nonlinear equation. This nonlinear equation is usually given in a residual form, and there we looked at a one dimensional case, which is probably one of the easiest things you can do. The solution to this residual is entering a loss functional for which we want to obtain gradient information, and then we implemented three different approaches a finite difference approach, a forward sensitivity approach, as well as an adjoint sensitivity approach. In the derivations to the forward and adjoint sensitivities, there are additional derivative information. So for instance, the derivative of the residual with respect to the unknown u. In this last video, we had to write down this derivative explicitly. So we had a function for the residual as well as for the derivative. In that particular case, it was rather easy, but we can use automatic differentiation in order to obtain that automatically for us. That is advantageous, first of all, that we don't have to write it down and cannot make any manual labor mistakes that appear in taking derivatives, but also in some points it's just faster and there is also a good chance that the derivative as implemented by JAX might be computationally more efficient. We leave the file mostly as is. I just want to execute it once again to refresh your mind. So if we executed that file, then we got three different derivatives here. So the finite difference, the forward and the joint one printed out and we saw that the forward and the joint are identical, whereas the finite difference one was the only accurate up to a certain digit after the comma. Okay, let's implement that. For this, let's first change the imports. So we will need JAX numpy. So we will import jax.numpy as jnp. And then I will remove the numpy import. And now we're also getting some linter errors here. And then we will also need JAX itself. So in order to first make it work what we had, we are going to change from numpy to JAX numpy by just changing to jnp. I also want to change that here and that should be it. So this is mostly where we only used NumPy and since Jax NumPy is mostly a drop in replacement for NumPy that still works. Hopefully, yes it does. And also interestingly, the SciPy algorithm root scalar that we used here also works um, at least to a certain degree um, when interfacing with Jax. Okay, but the actual point we want to do here is to delete these derivative functions and create new ones. So we will create a function del residual del u. And in order to do that, we will use a transformation from JAX, which is called gradient, which is taking the derivative information. Here we are just one dimensional. And it takes a function and that is the residual function. And then it wants to know with respect to which argument of this function we want to take the derivative of. And here this is called argnums, so the number of arguments. So argnums here will be zero because we want to take the derivative with respect to u. What JAX now does is it traces the residual function and performs automatic differentiation on it. So it will produce a function that works similar to the handwritten derivative but without us manually deriving this function. So let me delete that one. And then similarly, we can also create a derivative with respect to theta. So let's have del residual del theta with jax dot gradient on residual and then argnums here will be one. And then let's delete this function as well. And then let's go down. We had another derivative function and this was the derivative of the loss functional. So let's have the del j with respect to u being jax dot gradient on the loss functional. And since this one only has one argument here, I don't want to have this argnums. Then we can delete this here. And then we can attempt to re-execute the file, but we will run into an error. And here you see something like um, requires at least two positional arguments to be passed to the caller. And that is because at a certain point later, we used keyword arguments 
So that's not going to work with Jax um, because it can't really understand that. So here we also have to use positional arguments by deleting this theta equal. And we also had that down here. So let me also delete it here and here as well. Then saving the file, re-executing. And here we go. At the first glance, this seems to work as before, but you might already see that the finite difference derivative is a little bit off. So also when we look, compare it to the run where we had it without the new automatic differentiation derivatives. And the interesting point here is that Jax by default is using single precision floating point numbers, whereas with NumPy before we had double precision. And we can force Jax to use double precision by saying Jax dot config dot update and then say Jax enable x64 being true. And if we then rerun our file, we're getting the same values as we had in the NumPy run. And we also have the exactly same derivative information that we, that we had in the NumPy run. And you also see that the finite difference derivative is getting more precise or closer to the machine precision derivatives. And that is because those finite difference derivatives highly depend on the floating point precision. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this quick follow-up on how to use the JAX for automatically differentiating functions functions. As said here in this one dimensional case, um, there is not a big difference, but at least it might help you to understand it conceptually. And also tune in for the next episodes where we will then use Jax also to create Jacobian matrices. And there are some more interesting things to consider there. Also with respect to using them in Jacobian vector products and vector Jacobian products. A big thanks to all the Patreons of the channel. If you also want to support my vision of free education on these advanced mathematical topics, you find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and consider subscribing. Here you will now see similar videos and I hope to see you in one of them.